RV Mods Part 2, The Furniture and Bathroom Once I finished the interior, the next step was clearly a bed. Building cabinets and furniture is one thing. Trying to do so and keeping the weight down on a travel trailer is a completely different animal. I created a simple box frame with 1x2s, and keep in mind the box is divided as there is a door for outdoor storage on the outside uh, of the trailer. Uh, originally, the bed frame was built with pistons and a lid to have storage underneath. I later added large drawers as it was quite inconvenient to always be lifting up the mattress to get our clothes. The next addition was the slide out furniture. I decided to build my own furniture rather than to spend over two thousand dollars on my couch and dinette furniture. In fact the entire build ran me less than two hundred dollars for both pieces. The couch itself also had an access door from the outside, so I designed a couch with a storage section underneath and it can easily slide out to become a bed uh, 6 foot by 4 foot that sleeps too comfortably. Uh, notice my sewing workmanship on the cushions. The cushions were purchased online and I bought some great fabric on sale at a nearby fabric shop to upholster them. Now, while I did attain my Boy Scout merit badge for sewing, in this particular instance, I went with the simpler staple to the board method. I don't expect to be flipping them over, so if they get dirty, what's another 10 bucks in fabric and staples? Similarly, I made the dinette set to be a storage area as well as a bed. The table leaf will drop to the seats and a small cushion will complete another two-person, six-foot by four-foot bed. I fully intend to add to this as I didn't have the forethought to have drawer access and it is extremely inconvenient to remove the cushions every time I need to get something from storage. Lesson learned. With the trip a month away, I thought the bathroom would be a good idea to have. The original bathroom was the nastiest thing on the face of the planet. The tub had more cracks than a plumber's convention, and every one of the cracks was poorly sealed with either caulking, silicon, bondo, epoxy, or packing tape. Uh, the tub's cracks, not the plumber's. Rather than spending $150 on a plastic tub, I again spent less than that on the whole bathroom. I built a shower stall as opposed to a plastic tub. I lined the walls with some FRP, uh, fiberglass reinforced paneling. Bought a new toilet and sink, built a vanity, built a medicine cabinet, built some extra shelves, and I slapped it all together. At 24 inches by 40, with a 6 foot 6 height and a curved shower rod, I don't feel cramped at all in that shower. Now, if you've been following along, you've counted sleeping arrangements for six. Two in the master and four optional in the couch and dinette beds. But the trailer came with two bunk beds and my youngest daughter needed a way to get to her dibs on the top bunk bunk so I built this ladder it's out of the way and sturdy enough to hold me the bunks obviously received two new mattresses or should I say cushions a bunk mattress would cost two hundred and thirty eight dollars whereas an upholstery cushion is thirty four bucks I would say they're essentially the same thing but I gotta be truthful the upholstery cushion is more firm and she prefers it over a mattress. Go figure. The lower bunk just needed some trim work so I finished it off. Now being that my kids love their tablets, phones, or whatnots, I wired up four port USB fast charging receptacles to each of their uh, bunk beds to the 12 volt side of the RV. The RV fridge never worked and neither did the furnace. I live in Florida, so a furnace is a moot point, and uh, I did away with it. The RV fridge was another matter. 1400 bucks for a three-way fridge? Really? Every place we go has electric, so after gutting the area and sealing both gas lines, I bought a Brandsmart fridge for 200 bucks, and I got a colder unit with two uh, cubic feet more than the original. Now on to the AC. The AC was just missing a filter cover, so I had to replace the entire interior panel because I didn't sell one separately. But the total cost, including an add-on optional 5K heater for the uh, control panel, was 70 bucks. 
Now, as I'm mentioning the mods in chronological order, I'll move for a second to the exterior. As I said earlier, this was a carny trailer, so all you electrical engineers are going to love this next one. The seven-way trailer plug was apparently cut off, stolen, or repurposed on someone else's trailer. But not to worry, they didn't leave me without lights. Someone had bought, get this, a trailer light kit from Harbor Freight, screwed the lights onto the back bumper, and ran the trailer wires zip-tied to, what else, the propane line that runs the length of the RV. Needless to say, I bought a breakout box for a, with a seven-wire plug, rewired the entire electrical system, and while I was at it, I replaced and weather-sealed all the missing 14 marker lenses and replaced the original rear tail taillights. And while I was down there removing the Harbor Freight add-ons, I reattached the brake wires and rebuilt all four electric brakes. They just needed good, a good cleaning as they sat unused for years. And this brings me to the tires. I shall remind my audience once again that this qualifies as 100% a Carney trailer. Two of the tires were 15s. One was a 14-inch rim and the other a 16-inch. Three were what I would consider extremely bald, and I got very lucky, however. One tire was mounted on a 15-inch rim, and it was in great condition. So that became my spare. I found a great deal on Amazon for 260 bucks for a set of brand new E-rated tires and rims. Oh, and uh, did I tell you that the tires, the original ones, were C-rated? Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned for part three of RV Mods, our first trip, which will include some more modifications and a couple funny stories and mishaps for our first trip on the RV.